Hi Virgo, welcome to your Week Ahead Taroscope with me, Raphael from Radiant Reality. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for joining me. Quick note, my readings are for your sun, moon and ascendant signs. So whether you're a sun, moon or rising sign Virgo, this is for you. And I always advise that you watch all three to get a clearer, more complete picture of how they're gonna to speak to you. With that said, remember they are general readings. Not everything's gonna resonate with everybody and that is just fine. You should always use your own discernment. Before we start, as always, you could, um, before, I would like to bless my decks of cards with all forms of love, light, peace, prosperity and abundance and I pray that the messages that come through are ultimately clear and concise and they help you on your path to your highest vibrational good. So for your key to the week this week you have the judgment card, right? Culminations, completions and ends of an era are the things that feel like the themes for you this week. So not just the themes of the card, but for you personally. This is a moment where I kind of feel like this is a, a light at the end of the tunnel moment. So if you find this week, you feel like you're closing in on something or you feel like there's a door about to be shut in order for you to really be advanced or pushed or shunted forward in some way, it wouldn't surprise me. The other thing with the judgment card, I tend to call this the blast from the past card, right? So in some way, shape or form, someone or something could come back into your world this week that really maybe you didn't expect to see, right? And in a lot of ways, because of the energy that came through with this card at first, you may feel like when you look at this person or this thing, you might say to yourself, wow, I've come a long way since then. Like I'm not the same person that used to be in love with this person, or I'm not the same person that used to work at this place, or I'm not the same person. Like I don't feel about myself how I used to when this person could treat me a certain way. So this week, like it looks like there's been some really big personal evolution or advancement. And this week you're gonna have an opportunity to really understand that at an experiential kind of level. Uh, so if you haven't got yours yet, your 2022 Taroscope is up there for your viewing and purchasing pleasure. You can get yours on the link in the description box below or on the, one of those little floating things above my head. For your actions and options this week, you've got the Nine of Cups. This is beautiful and a really deep, profound sense of healing, especially because you've got this judgment card here. This could be, for a lot of you, this could be some sort of wound, like an old wound that really now starts to close or maybe a situation arises and you realize wow you know what I would have I would have approached this really differently before or I would have felt a certain way about this happening before if this was a different uh, uh, a different moment of my life I think this week you get an opportunity to see how far you've come on something. Now, we need to talk about the fact that this is wish fulfillment as well. This could be an old offer, idea, project of some sort that you genuinely thought like, that's it, I missed my one shot, this is never gonna happen again, and it, boom. This week, someone or something shows up with this thing that you've been wanting to do in hand. This opportunity shows up for you and you're like, wow, I have a chance here to, to really do this again. I really like this for you because it's the Nine of Cups and it suggests that a wish that you held once upon a time now has the potential to be fulfilled. For your communications and conversations, you've got the Hierophant card underneath the judgment, right? So this is going to be a week of some intense conversations, right? I, I just wanna make you aware of that right now. Some of the things that come up this week, and I'm sorry to say this, may be shadows of your past, right? And this is one thing about the way that like, don't get me wrong, I understand the way that the world works and I think advancement and evolution are really powerful things, but there is something, there's a thread running through the, the online sphere at the moment where it's like, let's hold people accountable for everything they've ever done wrong or said online in their past. And it's like, for fuck's sake, get a damn grip. Like seriously, I haven't got time for all of that shit. You wanna hold somebody accountable for something that they said or did 20 years ago? If it was something like murder, do you know what I mean? Then yes, absolutely. But if it's something that somebody said because they had an opinion on something 10, 15, 20 years ago, 
What kind of bollocks is that? I'm sorry, but nobody is the same person that they were yesterday, let alone that amount of time ago. And the reason I'm setting the stage with this uh, little soapbox tirade moment is, some of your old belief patterns, structures, thoughts, ideas, something that maybe you said that somebody has latched onto, in your past could come up this week, right? So maybe somebody says to you, well, you know, you're saying this now, but you used to believe this, or you used to talk like this, or you used to feel like that. And it's like, okay, but that was who I was then. That doesn't mean that you have to consistently be that person. And this is why, again, this really holds true. Who you were is no longer necessarily who you are now. And it's not really um, right for somebody to hold you accountable for something that you believed a long time ago. But, you know, something in your past this week is gonna betray you, I'm sorry to say that. Um, and I really hope that, it, you know, that it's gentle with you. But also, remember what I said, it's gonna give you this moment to say, you know what, I've come a long way because I would have acted or reacted in a very different way if this had happened however long ago, right? So in a lot of ways, kudos to you. Now, that being said, one thing that you do want to be aware of this week is who or what you are tied to may also betray you. So this is a time where you probably wanna really look at your circle and really think, how does this uh, portray me? right? I, it's not to say that it's good or bad, I'm just saying it's something that you want to check in on. Now, that being said, for those of you that are employed by somebody else, this could be big conversations with uh, shake-ups going on in the company. Maybe the company that you work for is being sold. Maybe the entire management group is being thrown out. Um, there's some big shift or shake-up coming up in your company that is going to affect everybody on the ground. And I think this week you're going to hear the first of the rumbles. For those of you that are business owners, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, people that work for themselves, um, in a lot of ways, the way that this comes up for you in regards to what I talked about previously, it's going to give you a chance to really kind of vet who you work with from here on in and more so, maybe more stringently than ever. And I don't actually think that that's a bad thing at all. When it comes to those of you that are uh, retired or no longer working, this is time for you to really get to grips with your rituals. What do you do on a daily basis that either hinders or helps you? Um, getting really clear on that and maybe talking to somebody about it, you know, maybe a peer, possibly a professional, wouldn't surprise me if it was that, um, you know, something to really dig around in because I think this is gonna help you understand why maybe you're not getting the experience that you want. For your love and relations, you have the Wheel of Fortune. This is right underneath the Nine of Cups. How beautiful is that? For those of you that are single, I mean, love could definitely find you this week. I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, and this seems to have been a bit of a theme for Virgos this year, I'm really sorry. Um, but you may not necessarily be at your best, but I always say this, if you meet someone when you're, you know, haphazard, you're just out at the gym and you're absolutely gross, you, you know, you smell like a street vendor in, I don't know, like, do you know what I mean? Like all of that kind of stuff, or maybe you just don't look your best, or maybe you're going for a really rough patch and they see you absolutely tearing somebody a new one. Um, when people meet you at that point, when they see you in that way, it's like, okay, it can't really get any worse than this, right? So from there, they're only gonna see the better sides of you anyway. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. I kind of feel like this is either some sort of role reversal for those of you that are partnered, married, or in long-term commitments. There's some sort of role reversal going on between you and your partner. And that doesn't mean that, you know, the, <laughs> you know your, your husband's now going to be your wife or anything like that. It just means that there is maybe, you know, your husband says, look, I will stay home with the kids while you go back to school or while you go out and work because you now want to pursue the career that you've always felt passionate about. Maybe, uh, you know, the wife says to her husband, hey, look, you know what? it's time for you to be more domestic or it's time for you to do more of, of whatever. There's some sort, and when I say role reversal, it doesn't have to be for the, the, the specific norms and roles and all the rest of it. It's just that there's some sort of role reversal here. It's like you're passing 
different batons to each other that are going to enable you to go off and do different things which could actually be really exciting and then finally this could see a big interaction in some way shape or form for some of you this is deciding that you're finally ready to tie the knot and that's really nice for those of you uh, for your money and materials you've got the devil card and it's right underneath the hierophant card this week if you are having to interact with a financial institution i'm gonna say if it can wait then probably wait the reason i say this is we know you dear virgos do have a tendency to fixate and there might be something that's amiss maybe something that's not right and you could pick 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 um until you you know piss 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 somebody off and then it kind of blows up in your face just be careful um, when it comes to your physical health and vitality this week and the weird thing is the first thing that popped into my mind was if they're having trouble this week with their with their health it's all sleep related i don't know what you've got going on in here but your body literally appears to be exhausted and it's kind of because you're chewing your own brains over something find a way to get some bloody rest this week all right when it comes to your home and environment um, <laughs> it doesn't mean that there's problems coming into the home. It could be that this week, you know, maybe you are <sighs> middle of the toothpaste stuff, right? Some people like to squeeze it from the bottom so it's all nice and neat. Some people like to just squeeze it from the, the middle and then, you know, it's kind of like a mess. For those of you that don't know, I am that middle squeezer. <laughs> Uh, and I guess what I'm trying to say to you is if any problems or challenges arise at home this week, it's likely because you are being a little bit picky, all right? So just remember, it's going to be middle of the toothpaste stuff. Um, for your new moon message, what do you need to know about this new moon? What might it be highlighting or revealing or creating for you? The gate 23 and assimilate. So whatever big goals, hopes or dreams or wishes you have, they are absolutely possible. And this new moon is really asking you to dream big because there is a chance for them to become real. There is a chance for them to become tangible. You are the bridge builder, right? So it stands to reason that this new moon is asking you to think outside the box, right? Whatever you know to be the tried and true, you're gonna have to find a different way. But this card tells you that it is totally possible. You just have to find a way to assimilate the fantasy and the reality all right with that said i wish you an abundance of all of that good stuff have a fantastic week let me know in the comments how it shapes up take care and i'll see you soon